All right, I've had a chance to use this little tool holder and so far it is amazing. Uh, I'm almost finished with it. There are a few things that I would change if I was gonna build it again. Wait, before we get too carried away with things that I would change, how about let's look at how I built it in the first place. First things first, let me find all of these little hand tools that I keep losing on almost every project. I feel a bit like a crow here. I just like to collect these shiny things. During the workbench build, I found one of the biggest problems I had was finding where I put my hand tools. Anything that marks it out, anything that I use for measuring any of these small tools I would put down, hide them under things, pieces of wood would get put on top, and I probably spent a good 25% of my time looking for some of these. So, before the workshop is finally finished, my plan is to make a small hand tool caddy just for these that can sit on the end of my bench, can be carried around, but I will be putting tools in and out as I use them. So they're immediately accessible. And then after that, the workshop should be complete and ready for bigger projects. So let's, uh, let's build this. I think the best way to handle this is to take these longer items and put them along the back row of the three lines. We'll go with the rulers, the angle finder, the calipers, and anything that's a little longer. The middle will be my com smaller six inch combination square, the sliding T-bevel, a few of the other smaller measuring devices, uh, smaller rulers, etc., marking knives, and probably the pencils. And then along the very front, I'll put the smallest engineer squares, along with some of my punches, uh, maybe the center drill bit, any of the shorter pieces, they'll go along the front. Okay, on this, I'm going with an offcut of white oak from one of the previous projects. This offcut of walnut and this fairly punky piece of maple that I was given and uh, mirrors the lumber that I've got in my workbench. So as you can see, one of the first things I did was ditch that punky piece of maple and decide to go with this offcut that I had of um, I think it's one by eight, one by ten, maybe. Uh, this would make it easy. I could just glue lamb this together. So I take everything over to the table saw, rip it all down to the widths and sizes that I want. And the whole idea with the laminating the maple is I'm going to use the width of the saw blade to essentially dictate the size of the slots. So. The saw blade has an eighth of an inch kerf, which should be perfect for slotting in any of my measuring equipment, such as the angle finder, the square, uh, and any of the rulers. Just want to do a quick test fit. As you can see, 1 8 inch kerf works perfectly as it slices out just the right amount. Underneath this, I didn't think about this at the time, but this goes all the way through, and so these rulers and uh, marking knives just slide straight through. So I added a small piece of walnut underneath just to stop anything that I put in here sliding all the way through.
I use the little tea bubble and the calipers to figure out A, where things need to go, and then B, what size holes or slots or storage I need to create. Then it's over to the drill press and start drilling out some of these holes. I used a variety of bits, regular bits, forstner bits. I think I may even have used a spade bit at one point. Then it's back over to test their fit. Ah, look at that. It's like a glove. And these taller items, ah, this is such a satisfying feeling. Okay, so I needed more holes drilled out. This is on the very front part. I've already notched a part for the little block plane, but now I need to do some, I think these are 3 8 inch uh, holes for drill bits and small items that I plan on storing on the smallest level. Then it's basically glue all these pieces together so that they make this nice little stepped formation. I initially try to use some smaller Bessie clamps but they don't work so I reach for the 6 inch uh, Harbour Freight clamps. They work a treat. Halfway through I came up with this idea to add a couple of magnetic strips across the front to hold drill bits or any small loose metal things that, you know, again, easily lost. I think this is pretty clever. And I'm pretty certain somebody's done it before me. Oh, there you can see that little walnut piece underneath to stop anything sliding through those holes. solid bit of sanding just to make sure the bottom was nice and smooth and flat so that I could rest it on the workbench properly. And again you can see that little walnut insert that prevents anything from slipping through. Then grab the block plane and add a chamfer to all the sharp corners. Partly because I don't want to cut myself on any sharp corners but secondly I just don't want them chipping out and tearing away and I get to play with the block plane and honestly there's really very little more cathartic than using a block plane and that sexy old HNT Gordon vice Oof. just look at it thing is spectacular I then finish with boiled linseed oil. I think this is my go-to for all shop furniture from now on. It's pretty simple. I also finished some outdoor furniture with it the other day, but it's just holding up a pizza oven. Okay, after the finish has dried, I then decide I'm going to add these little metal brackets I found on Amazon on the back. They're going to hold my tape measures. I initially went with some of the tape measures that I had laying around the shop, but I realized that I put these in the wrong position and they actually drug, drug, dragged. They drag along the workbench, so I swapped them out with some smaller tape measures. See, it's just slightly too big. You know, if I'd measured it, it would have worked perfectly, but you know, I'm a moron, like I've told you before. I added these two little handles on the side I'd probably move them further towards the middle of the build if I was to do it again. I may even change that at some point. I'm undecided. The last thing I've got to do is load this up with all the little toys. Did I say toys? I meant tools. Tools. All the little hand tools.
it always feels so good when, you know, everything has a home and there's a home for everything. I think that's the phrase, uh, although I'm pretty sure I've butchered that. But anyway, I digress. I've since used this and honestly, 10 out of 10. It's amazing. Highly recommend it and you, everybody should do this for their shop. All right, I've had a chance to use this little tool holder and so far it is amazing. Uh, I'm almost finished with it. There are a few things that I would change if I was gonna build it again, they're not that big a deal right now. Maybe I'll change them in the future, such as these handles, they need to be further forwards. But the one thing that I am gonna fix right now is this little um, pencil uh, lead holder for my Pika pen. When I built it, I made it slightly too long or I made it the right size. I trimmed it down slightly and now this doesn't quite fit in this slot. It sits a little proud, so it has a tendency to slide out. So all I'm gonna do now, cut a piece of leather and just screw it on here and here and then that will prevent this from sliding out. So that's what we'll do now. And then this is officially wrapped. Okay. Off cut of leather. This came from my previous project, the um, suitcase rack thing that I made out of uh, white oak. Okay. So. Knife, back away in its slot, center punch in its slot, pencil, ruler, and there you have it. Oh, knock one of them off the front. Last thing to do, look at it. Until next time, peace.